shadows lend a mysterious dimension to objects. The dramatic power of moving shadows is perhaps the basis on which shadow theatre has evolved. India has a long and continuous tradition of shadow plays extending over 2,000 years. It now survives in four different styles. In Kerala, it is known as Tol Pavakutu, in Karnataka, as Tobulu Gombeatta, in Andhra Pradesh, as Tolu Bummalata, and in Orissa, as Ravan Chaya. The shadow play of Orissa is the least sophisticated. Orissa is known for the exquisite temples at Puri of Lord Jagannath, and the Sun Temple of Konarak, built more than 600 years ago. Long before these temples were built, Deep in the obscure past, Ravanchaya evolved. Ravanchaya literally means shadow of Ravana and presents exclusively the Rama legend. In this sequence, we see Ravana entering Ashokavatika where Sita lies captive. Today, there is only one traditional Ravanchaya puppeteer left, seen here worshipping the rising sun as part of his daily ritual. He lives in a remote village. In his spare time, he prepares a puppet figure. All the puppets are made of deer skin. First, the outline of the figure is drawn. Then, it is cut out with very simple indigenous tools. Finally, after the puppet is made, a bamboo stick is tied to each figure to hold it upright. The preliminary ritual of breaking a coconut is followed by the lighting of an earthen lamp filled with castor oil. Puppets are then arranged backstage in order of their appearance. When the show begins, the leader come narrator takes his position in full view of the audience. sings the invocation while playing the kanjani, which is a type of small frame drum. The first shadows to appear on the screen are two stock characters. 
the village barber and his grandson in a comic prelude. The chorus consists of the leader narrator and two vocalists. One of the vocalists plays Das Kati, a type of castanet, while singing. And the other plays a pair of cymbals. A fascinating moment in the Ravanchaya show is the fight between Ram and Ravana. They are now riding on chariots and exchanging arrows that flash across the screen. Finally, Ravan, symbolizing evil, dies and with his death, the Ravanshaya show comes to an end. <laughs> Kerala, its coastline washed by the Arabian Sea. The famous dance drama Kathakali evolved in this land. Tol Pavakutu of Kerala is even more ancient than Kathakali. Over the centuries, it has diminished in importance. There are now only a few puppeteers left who perform Tol Pavakutu. They depend on cultivation to earn their living. Kerala puppets are made of buffalo hide and these puppets have jointed hands. On the day of the performance, the puppeteer first goes to the village temple. After offering prayers, he goes to the traditional Dol Pavakutu stage, a permanent structure facing the temple, to make arrangements for the show. After sunset, he again goes to the temple to light the traditional lamp which he brings to the theatre hall. From this lamp, a number of wicks are lighted and these are taken backstage and placed in coconut shells standing on a plank. This row of lamps provides the light source for the show. The song of invocation is sung in chorus. An hourglass shaped drum, the Edupara, and a pair of cymbals, Thalam, are the only accompanying musical instruments. The invocation is followed by shlokas in praise of Ganapati, the elephant headed god. Dol Pavakutu also presents exclusively the Rama legend. Two monkey characters from the Ramayan, Vali and Sugriva, are seen fighting. Uh. Andhra Pradesh. Traditional Lepakshi painting 
show a close resemblance to the local shadow puppets. But although there are about a hundred puppeteers in Andhra, they have to depend on other professions, such as selling utensils. It is only during their spare time that the entire family is engaged in puppet making. By a special treatment, the goat hide is first made translucent. The limbs of the puppet figure are then cut and perforated. Vegetable dyes are applied for colouring. Finally, the limbs are jointed. Andhra puppets are the largest of the four styles, ranging from four to six feet in height. They throw coloured shadows on the screen. A show in the village is announced by drumming. Towards evening, the puppet stage is put up. A long ritual precedes the show. Then the figures are pinned to the screen with a special tough form. The lamps overhead are lighted. The play begins with a prayer to Lord Ganapati. Puppeteers sing and speak the dialogue for the puppet characters while manipulating them. They also stamp their feet on two wooden planks to provide the rhythm and sound effects. Two instruments are used for accompaniment, the cymbal, talam, and a drum, maddalam. Here again, we witness the battle between Ram and Ravan. But in Bhummalata, there are also stories from the Mahabharata and the Srimad Bhagavata. Karnataka, the home of Yakshagan, a form of folk theatre. The mass medium of the film has almost obliterated the traditional arts, relegating them largely to the villages. The Shadow Theatre of Karnataka, locally known as Doglu Gombiatta, has suffered most as a result of this trend. The few puppeteers who still survive have to resort to cultivation for their livelihood.
In Karnataka, as in Andhra, the puppets throw coloured shadows on the screen. But the Karnataka puppets are smaller in size. Another distinguishing feature is the composite puppet figures, representing climactic scenes from the puppet plays. Ganapati is worshipped before the lamps are lighted. The ritual of breaking the coconut follows. Then, the lamps are put on a plank similar to the way in which the Kerala puppeteers place them. Ganapati's figure is then removed from the screen along with the setting. An episode from the Mahabharata. The battle between Arjun and Babrubhan. Similarly, stories from the Ramayan are enacted. The use of composite figures in place of single puppet figures brings a quality of complex visual sophistication to the spectacle. These composite figures have bold, sinuous outlines and are intricately interlinked. Some of these have moving parts as well. Togulu Gumbiatta is the only style in which a melodic musical instrument the Mukkavina is used. The Dugi Tabla provides the rhythmic accompaniment and the harmonium serves as a drone on the key note. Comic interludes are fascinating. Dancing figures join the comic characters to add glamour and fun. Finally, Short sequences from the Ramayan, Ravan Chaya. Hanuman assumes a larger size and leaps to Lanka. Tol Pavakutu. Hanuman meets Sita in Ashoka Bhatika. Tolu Bummalata. The captured Hanuman at Ravan's court. Toglu Gombe Atta. Hanuman, his tail of flame, sets fire to Lanka. Through the centuries, in different regions of our large country, these shadow theatre forms have provided entertainment for the common people, bringing pleasure to young and old alike. These humble folk forms, 
which brought the dignity and beauty of our ancient epic to the vast rural masses now struggle desperately for survival. Thank you.